Our rivers and soil are being depleted at a dramatic pace. In the near future, we will not be able to feed our populations and quench their thirst. The simplest and the most effective solution is to increase the tree cover and in turn enrich the soil and replenish water bodies. We need to understand this. There are many perspectives and many angles from which you can look at the ecological degradation or ecological problem as we know it today, climate change and other aspects. But very fundamental and simple way of looking at this is, there is loss of biodiversity and the richness of the soil is being lost. The organic content in the soil is being lost. That means soil, the rich soil which supports life is turning into sand in some sense. This is called as desertification. All that we know as life on this planet, over ninety percent of it or more, essentially is happening within the top thirty-nine inches of the soil. Thirty-nine inches of topsoil is… Fl is nourishing every part of life, from a microbe to an insect to a worm to bird to animal, trees and human beings. All our lives, our food is grown within this thirty-nine inches. What needs to happen here is, right now, twenty-five percent of the agriculture land on the planet is being declared as fallow or degenerated soil. Well, the best solution would be to bring at least forty percent of the land mass, arable land mass, on the planet under tree cover. If that looks too far, to whatever extent we can, we must do it in the next ten years. At least all the tropical river basins must have forty percent tree cover, only then the rivers will flow. Above all, enriching the soil, the richness of the soil determines the vibrance of life that happens on this planet, including ourselves. Our health, vitality, well-being is determined by the richness of the soil. And the only way you can enrich the soil is by these wonderful trees, the leaves from the trees and the animal waste. There is simply no other way to put back organic content. Machines cannot do it. This is the only way to do it. So, it is important to put back the trees, but the question is always about where is the land, who… on whose land shall we put this? See, we need to understand this. Right now, fifty-one million square kilometers of land is being farmed. Out of this farmland, forty million square kilometers of land is being used to raise animals and their food. You don't have to give up meat if you have surrendered to its taste and uh, its nourishment, it's fine with me. But if you reduce your meat consumption by fifty percent, twenty million square kilometers of land will become available for tree plantations. Twenty million square kilometers of land, if you bring back tree cover, believe me, you would have reversed the whole impact of climate change in the last fifty years, in the next twenty-five years. The amount of carbon that we have put out into the atmosphere can be easily sequestered just by this. Right now, we are working on one river basin, that is Kaveri, eighty-three thousand square kilometers, two point four two billion trees. 5.2 million farmers, over 85 to 86 million people. This, their life will change in the next eight to ten years time, if we successfully make this happen. Whose work is this? Is this my work? Is this the work of a certain organization? Is it the work of a government? No, we need to understand this is a generational work. Every one of us who are breathing here, who are drinking water, who are consuming food, it is our work. If every one of us do not participate in this, we will fail. What failure means is, right now all the studies show that we have topsoil for farming only for another maximum of sixty years. That means we want to end human race in sixty years, we want to end all other li life on this planet. What is our intention? They are saying by the end of twenty-first century, fifty percent of the species would have become extinct. Where are we heading? 
this is our time on the planet. We as a generation of people can make this happen. Well, what you can do and cannot do, you decide. I am not here to tell you what you should do, but every one of us is capable of doing something. Each one of us must contribute to making this happen because this is generational work, this is our responsibility for the future generations and it's our privilege. Right now, we are at a situation where we can change the very way the life on this planet lives just by doing a simple contribution. It has to come on farmlands, it has to become a commercial produce. It is very important for us to understand from now on, timber, wood does not mean forest. If we want to use wood, we must grow it. Exploiting forests in the world, that must become history. There is no possibility anymore to use forest as a source of timber. Forest is not a source of anything. Forest is something which is the source of our life and the source of biodiversity on this planet. It must just stay as it is without any disturbance. If we want to use wood, we must grow it. It must become a farm produce. This is why agroforestry, this is why farm-based agriculture, economic value of this is tremendous. Farmers will benefit immensely from this process. As we have demonstrated with over 70,000 farmers that their income can go up anywhere between 300 to 800 percent. In five to seven years, the nourishment value of the food will be enhanced. Above all, soil will be healthy. The strength and enrichment of the soil determines how strong a life we are. Let's make this happen. On this day, which we are celebrating as River Revitalization Day, let us commit ourselves to something on a monthly basis. Commit something, one tree, 42 rupees. Everybody can do it, a beggar on the street can do it. So, commit ourselves to something which is for the next 10 to 12 years, we will manifest and see that we are not just about irresponsible damage, we are also a responsible repair for this planet.